Hey there everyone, I'm Linlin, Lin, and it looks like this story is coming to a close. And if it sounds like I'm sick while I'm recording this, it's because I am. Either way, Omnia is someone who I have talked about on this channel before, as they have quite the track record of reprehensible behaviour on their platform. For more of a detailed look into why, you can check out the playlist concerning them. But for a bit of a crash course here, Omnia has shown problematic behaviour for a long time, but they ultimately had a straw break the camel's back when they made a video that drew clear black and white lines as to what was valid as traumatic events, all to form the base for an argument that they didn't really need that base for. And when they saw pushback from people like Hopeless Peaches, they doubled down further while making arguments that make no sense at the best of times, while lying at the worst of times. Only to unlist both videos, and make a new one that, in my opinion, rings as an incredibly hollow social media non-apology. For more in-depth coverage, my video on the topic is available. And that situation was the last we heard from Omnia for a good while, until they returned with a series of five videos discussing a previous altercation that they had with Kai Weiss, which would have been fine if not for closing that series out with claiming that a handful of creators condoned a when the evidence that they showed to that effect did not support that claim, only providing the slightest retraction after one of them kicked up enough of a fuss on the Funny Bird app. Not without Omnia trying and failing to use the exact same dishonest arguments that they were supposedly sorry for, in a literal word-for-word -word manner, by the way. For more information on this, my videos on the topic are also available. And at the time that that third video came out, I really did think that the situation would have ended there. And for a good while it did. However, Omnia recently returned to YouTube again with a video that attempts to address the future of their channel, as well as taking needed accountability for the things that they had done previously. At which point, I have a few things to say about this video. But before we do so, if you feel like supporting me in any way, then feel free to subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to support myself by making the content that I do, so if you want to help me out, then you know what to do. It's free for you and it helps a lot for me. But back on topic now, let's get into this video. At some point in the summer of 2022, I created a video titled The Common commentary community's biggest flaw, where I talked about the ways in which certain commentary channels on YouTube did a bad job at separating traumatic situations from dramatic ones. I wanted to make that video because I was seeing that certain commentary channels were mistreating very serious experiences and making them out to be less serious than they actually were. This extended from abuse to and I had the intention of bringing light to the victims who were suffering this trauma and how their situations were being downplayed for content in certain subsections of the commentary community. In that video, I really up trying to communicate that message and made it so that people felt invalidated by the message I was spreading. I unnecessarily drew hard lines between what does or doesn't count as trauma, and I was told I gate kept trauma and drama within the video. While that was the farthest thing from my intention, it really didn't matter because that was the impact that I left with my audience, which further alienated people and made them feel as though they couldn't be traumatized by things I labeled typically lukewarm drama. <laughs> It was stupid that I had said shit like that. Obviously, everyone's experiences will impact people differently, so while I may think beef between friends or petty arguments could be considered drama, some people will take those experiences harder, and it may feel traumatic for them to live through situations like that. Essentially, what I'm trying to say is that in the midst of attempting a good-natured message, I unknowingly invalidated a lot of people in my audience's lived experiences. The wording that you use here is nauseating. While it is good that you acknowledge drawing unneeded lines between drama and trauma, the way that you say that you were told you were gatekeeping is pointlessly indirect. Like, mate, if you don't agree that what you did was gatekeeping, then just say so. Or don't, because the thing you admit to, drawing unneeded lines, is a form of gatekeeping at the end of the day. Stop trying to soften the blow when you take accountability. It's just as pathetic as it is dishonest. And for a while, honestly, I felt like the critique that I was gatekeeping trauma was done in bad faith. For one, the main person who raised these concerns is someone who I have historically not liked for reasons I don't care to go into minute detail about. To keep it brief, in the past me and this person have not seen eye to eye, they have said things about me that were untrue, and they have been very hurtful to me in regards to my situation and the ways in which I exited and publicized the abuse I suffered within that relationship. That fact alone made me struggle to see the damage I had done. So I did what I felt was best at the time, I reiterated my intention, demonstrated the ways in which this person misrepresented my video, and addressed their concerns directly and openly. Essentially, I tried to defend myself and my message. While I tried to give credit where credit was due in terms of this person's critique, it 
truly wasn't enough, I wasn't being receptive in the way I tried to lead on. And when that video did poorly, I enlisted it. So you claim that Peaches was being dishonest about your video. Literally where? I know you don't want to name them for some arbitrary reason that you don't say, but it's pretty ironic at best that you say that they were dishonest about your video, when first of all, you provide no example as to how, and secondly, the response you made to them had moments where you would just condescendingly say that you never said things when you did. So TLDR, pot meat kettle. Then I made an apology video, where I simply apologized for the way I miscommunicated my message, but I wasn't specific and I wasn't clear about what exactly it was that I was sorry for. A few people in the community accepted that apology and applauded me for being willing to take the criticism I was dealt on the nose, while others felt like the video was inauthentic and a cop-out. A few things here. Firstly, I don't know why you're acting like this tweet from Jar was a response to your apology video, when not only was the tweet in response to Harley's tweet about the first video in this situation, but both of them were from before your apology even came out. There are people who had valid concerns about your video and apology. Cool. Why not address them? With how that apology video ignored when you were criticized for an additional case of art theft on top of the one shown in your video on trauma versus drama, constantly tiptoed around the issue and kept acting as if the issue was merely miscommunication and absent-mindedness when it goes beyond that, I don't see why you don't address that. And that is what the core of the issue of this video is. How little substance is here in terms of what Omnia should should issue some sort of retraction for. As while they do mention the series they made concerning Kai, they don't offer any sort of correction for how they claimed that Sen, Jar, Lyo Convoy, Hopeless Peaches, Harley TBS, and Sister Zio all condoned abuse. They spent a good amount of their video addressing the situation that they've already apologized for, even if half-heartedly, only to not give a shred of attention to how they would falsely accuse people of condoning abuse only to conceitedly say, find where I said that, to imply that they didn't when they did. Even if it was just in the case of Harley and Zio, as they did cut them and only them out of the video, they make no actual correction to any of that. Even the one instance where they display knowing it was wrong to a degree, doesn't get addressed properly. Because I guess even in the face of a situation where you knew you were in the wrong, being able to own up to it to its fullest capacity just isn't in the cards for you. To conclude, if this video was made to let Omnia take accountability and to continue their channel, it only really does one of those. And given the mistakes that they have made, the one they succeed in is the one which was significantly less important. The most frustrating thing about their actions during the trauma versus drama situation was that even in the face of them understanding the need to apologize, they would just dance around the issue forever and not actually do that to a sufficient extent. And it's really annoying to see that traditional has not broken in that regard, as that very same problem persists here. But either way, that's been my take on the situation, and I hope you've enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, everyone.